Okay, so I want to talk uh, this time about um, uh, my new passion uh, because every time I come here I talk about quantum physics or uh, all kind of uh, strange uh, physical system and in the last year what happened is that um, I got kind of uh, uh, drawn into uh, the brain into all the science of the brain and uh, everything that is going on around the science of the brain. So, uh, je pense donc je suis, it means if I think, I am. And basically during my journey into this uh, brain and the science of the brain and uh, what's going on today in all these analyses, I learned a lot, a lot of things. It's really moved me uh, a lot and uh, I get very, very emotional. And the other thing is really, really proved me what um, Richard Dawkins really liked to say, and here uh, I think everybody is on the Wi-Fi, but uh, basically what he says is that science is really, really amazing, and if you don't agree, you can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what I did in the last year is uh, read about 13 to 14 different books that are all the merging of uh, neuroscience, philosophy, psychology, social science, and evolution. Everything here, everybody is using evolution as a predictive science about why we think the way we think, why the brain evolved the way it evolved and uh, why it moved. Uh, what started my journey is this book, which is What's Next. And uh, it's just a bunch of new essays about young researchers that are really at the edge of uh, science and at the edge of uh, their, their field. Uh, a lot of it was about normal uh, uh, quantum physics and uh, high-level uh, astronomy, but most of it was about neuroscience, psychology, and all this stuff. So they were trying to discover what is the operating system of the brain, how it worked. Uh, there was a really nice story about the separation of the body and the mind. Actually, if you think about it, the body and the mind are just one, and they are not separated, but we think that they are separated because in our brain, they are actually separated pieces. In our brain, we are dealing about what is the mind and what is uh, the, the psychology of things in a different place of our brain than what is uh, about our body. Uh, there is all kind of things about uh, mirror neurons. This is where I learned about my mirror neuron. How many people here know what is mirror neuron? Uh, so the mirror neurons are neurons that are firing because to represent and to um, make you uh, basically understand what the others are doing. When I'm moving my hand like that, actually in your brain there is the movement that you need to do for you to move your brain. I'm actually fucking up with your brain right now. Uh, what's, and it, basically it's the base of empathy. Inside your brain, everything that you see and everything that you interact with is actually replayed inside your brain to actually understand what you are seeing. Which means that when you are seeing another human being suffer, you uh, basically cannot, f uh, cannot stop from feeling the suffering. And this is psycho. Unless, you're a psycho. A, uh, unless you're a psychopath. Before that, I read a bunch of uh, books like Dan Ariely, Predictably Irrational, which is really funny about why we are dishonest, placebo effect. Uh, I read also Blink, um, a, lo a lot of strange things here um, about gut feeling, but um, another thing that was really interesting here in Blink is uh, all our emotion, everything that is going on inside our brain about our emotion, are going into our face. This is how we are reading mind between uh, each other and between human beings. You cannot stop your feeling and your emotion to actually uh, go in your face. And they are usually, when you control them, you go really, really fast. But um, basically, if uh, you do a video and you analyze, there is so uh, Richard Dawkins, the uh, beauty of evolution, obey evolution, it's the law, uh, which he talks about this other book, which is uh, basically the opposite of what uh, Richard Dawkins. And this book is uh, also quite amazing. There is a lot of wrong stuff. I really didn't like the, the way he's talking about the, uh, the goal of evolution, how evolution is, is evolving. But the power of the non-zero sum game and that every time that you are basically associating one plus one equals three, you are gaining a, a lot of things. And basically, ba based on this uh, assumption, when you are a social human, when you are a primate and a philosopher, you don't have the survival of the fittest, you have the survival of the kindest. In a social environment, the ones that are surviving are not the fittest, but the kindest. And this is how they explain the evolution of morality and how human beings evolve morality. Everybody is saying because of Darwinian, you just kill the fittest and it cannot create morality and human morality. But in fact, uh, by analyzing here in this great book about primate and philosopher, how um, so uh, that's finished.
Thank you. A lot of the